In the name of the glorious Trinity, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Glory be to the everlasting mercies which sent you to us, O Christ, the light of the world and the life of all. Give us wisdom by your law and enlighten our impulses by your knowledge. Sanctify our souls by your truth and grant that we may be obedient to your words and may fulfill your commandments at every hour. O you who enlightens the rational with the knowledge of your greatness, do enlighten, O my Lord, our thoughts, that we may meditate upon your holy and divine scriptures at all times, O Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Double-Edged Sword, a Christian podcast ministry presented by Father Gennard Lazar. Father Gennard is a parish priest of the Mud Edda Parish of the Syrian Church of the East in Turlock, California. Here's Father Gennard. Show me in the Bible. Where does it say in the Bible? Show me in the scriptures is a, a demand I receive many times when I'm engaging in peaceful, loving conversation, um, scriptural conversation or biblical conversation with my Christian brothers and sisters. Um... And as much as that is a very valid demand that our ultimate source is the Holy Scriptures, Sola Scriptura, which I like, I, I, uh, I admire Sola Scriptura, but we have to be genuine and honest to Sola Scriptura. You know, and I always say it's not about how I feel what the scripture is teaching and telling us and commanding us. It's not how I feel, how I perceive it, uh, because that is not faith. Faith is being obedient to God. Faith is loving God and worshipping God and being obedient to God, as I mentioned uh, last episode. So this this episode is going to be a solo scriptura episode on the understanding of deeds and their essentiality in salvation and in the pleasing or appeasing of the Lord and for the test of our faith and our judgment when the Lord returns. So let me start by quoting Luke chapter 6 verses 43 to 44. And you know, I, I encourage you to jot these down. I mean, I know this episode will be there for whenever you come back and revisit it in 10 years time, God willing. But um, if you want to um, have these verses handy, I, I, I recommend that. So let's look at Luke chapter 6, verses 43 to 44. And this is what Jesus is uh, instructing, and this is what Jesus is teaching. There is no good tree that bears bad fruits. Deeds, works, acts, fruits are all associated with each other nor a bad tree that bears good fruits. For every tree is known by its fruit, what it produces, which is what Jesus is telling us. So when you stand before a tree, an apple tree or a a narengi tree or tutfarengi tree, (laughs) strawberry, I think, tutfarengi, you look at the tree and when you see that the tree, some of the branches are bending over, almost breaking because of the fruit that it's yield, you think this is a good tree. But when you see a tree, just like Jesus did the sycamore, and only saw leaves on the tree, you think, no, this is not a healthy tree or this year this tree has let me down. By its fruits. See, you pass that judgment on that tree because of what you see the tree has whether produced or not produced in matthew chapter 16 verse 27 again jesus the true son of god our lord our king our savior our life giver and the forgiver of our sins our ultimate judge the righteous judge who does not show any partiality commands and teaches for the son of man and this is a warning actually for the son of man is to come in the glory of his father with all his holy angels he's talking about the second coming and then will he recompense that means reward 
or repay to every man as his deeds are. Doesn't even mention faith. Not that faith is um, uh, not required. That is the the first of um, you know. It's the it's the pinnacle. It's the first fruit of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Faith. But Jesus says that when he returns, he will repay, recompense to every man as his deeds are, as his works are. So if works are not essential and um, irrelevant, well, Jesus is telling me that I'm going to be judged by something or I'm going to be recompensed by something that is irrelevant? No, not according to the scriptures. And again, sola scriptura, only from the scriptures. Let's go to James chapter 2, verses 17 to 18. James is, is relating faith and deeds. And we're going to talk about faith in another episode, because I know there's going to be a lot of works. By faith you have been justified. By faith you have been uh, um, saved. We're going to talk about faith. By, uh, by, we're going to talk about faith. But let's concentrate on the deeds because these are important as well. They go hand in hand. Faith alone, not just faith. Faith alone without works is dead. Meaning there will be no recompense for dead, dead faith. When there is no deeds, there will be no recompensing. There will be no reward because there is no deeds. For a man may say, you have faith and I have works. Show to me your faith that is without works and I will show to you my faith by my works. I can feel the vibes. I can feel the questions echoing. What about Hebrews 11? What about Hebrews 11? Yes, we're going to talk about that. But let me quote Hebrews 11, 4. By faith. Now, St. Paul here emphasizes Deeds that are not done through faith are just ordinary, um, just habits, and uh, you know, uh, you know, do not appease God. They're not justified. By faith, Abel offered to God. So he did something. His faith drew Abel, brought Abel to a place where he did something, and this is his deed. Offered to God a better sacrifice than that of Cain. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than that of Cain. And on account of it, now some may say, no, that's on account of the faith. Let's not jump the gun. Let's take it easy. And on account of it, he is testified of that he was righteous. You may say, See, yes, righteousness through faith. And God bore testimony to his offering. So he's talking about what he actually did, how he proved his faith, how he emphasized his faith through what he did. Let me read it again. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than that of Cain, and on account of it, he is testified of that he was righteous. And God bore testimony to his offering offering and in consequence therefore though dead yet he speaks not that Abel speaks but to this day he is famous and he is celebrated and enjoys a good name among all the religious people when we talk about Abel now flick your Bibles or scroll up or Google Revelations 14, 13. And this verse I came across two weeks ago. So it's two weeks new in my mind. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, this is the voice of Jesus Christ. Write. It's a commandment. Write. Or take account or make note. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth, from now, yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, their deeds, their works, for their works will follow them. Where? They will follow them at the righteous tribunal of Jesus Christ. And hence Paul in 1 Corinthians states that we will all be judged according to our faith and deeds, whether evil or 
good. Let's have a look at one of the many renowned parables of Jesus Christ, praising glory be to his name. And it's in Matthew 21. We're going to pick it up from verse 28. A certain man had two sons, and he called the first and said to him, My son, go work today in the vineyard, which is the church, which is the world. Work today. We've all been called to work, to produce good fruits, good deeds. But he answered and said, I do not want to. But afterwards, he was moved with regret and he went. And we're going to read a commentary of one of the fathers on this. Then he came to the other and said to him, likewise. But he answered and said, I will, my Lord. He showed love through his faith in his Lord, but he did not go. He didn't do anything. Which one of these two did the will of the, his father? They were saying to him, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen. I mean, it's true. I say to you that tax collectors and prostitutes precede, precede you to the kingdom of God. Tax collectors or, or, and prostitutes who have repented from their evil and are now, now are producing good deeds precede you to the kingdom of God. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not trust him, but tax collectors and prostitutes trusted him. And even when you saw it, you were not moved with great or with regret afterwards to trust him. The blessed Theophylact, who is a one of the church fathers who comments on this, he writes, he introduces two types of men. One type are those who promised from the beginning, such as were the Jews who said, All which God spoke, we will do and we will obey. Exodus 24, 3. Do and obey, not just accept and love and believe in, but obey and do. The other type are those who disobeyed, such are the publicans and the harlots but also the people of the Gentiles, who from the beginning were not obedient to the will of God, but later they repented and obeyed. So he's talking about doing. He, he justified or commanded the, sec, the first son, who at first was not faithful, but then he did, he repented, or he changed his mind basically, and did the request of the father. Matthew 7, 24, everyone therefore, and this is the parable of the two men who build the houses. Everyone therefore who hears these words of mine and does them, puts them in practice, fulfills them. I'm going to have a look at some works. Everyone therefore who hears these words of mine and does them will be likened to the wise men who built his house on solid rock build you know the, the verse is is so so evident of doing things you know being active building working obeying going uh, toiling so deeds again are not just mere acts of uh, love to the lord but have no value or no significance when we face the righteous judgment of god which pertains to salvation. Let's look at some works that Christ has called us to as Christians. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving, loving, to love, to serve, to witness about Jesus Christ. These are actual deeds that we must fulfill. This is how we work in the vineyard, in the church, in the world, to continue to to pray and have that communication with God, to enter that presence of the Lord, not only for ourselves, but for others as well. Fasting, almsgiving, help the poor, the needy, to love thy neighbor, to serve in the church, to serve Jesus Christ, and to witness. However, however, we must know this. We must examine in what manner or motive or reason we are fulfilling these deeds or our obligation, Christian obligations. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 23, Jesus said to those who preached 
his name, who were casting out demons, who had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yet he says, I do not know you away from me, workers of evil, because their motives, the manner that they were fulfilling their responsibilities and the reason why they were preaching and 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 um, uh, you know and healing um, uh, was not appeasing to God, probably boastful, maybe for uh, self gain. Praying not to be seen, and not repetitive, repetitively. Matthew chapter six verses five and six. Fasting without grumbling without being gloomy, without f- boasting about our fast. Matthew 6.16 6, Loving, let not your love be deceitful, says Romans 12.9. To serve not forcefully, but with trembling, with joy, with fear, with gladness to serve the Lord. Psalm 100 verse 2 and Psalm 2 verses 11 to 12. To witness and to proclaim the message of the Gospels and of Jesus Christ not heretical and false, but in spirit and in truth. The need of loving the Lord, we must not love the Lord God because he will do something in return, beloved, but rather for what he has done for us through his Son, his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and also because he is Lord, praise be to his name. You see, among the women who came to the tomb of Christ, On the third day, they were anticipating to see a dead body. They were anticipating to find a body that was still, that was actionless, that could not do anything for them. But that body, when it was alive, while they saw and they experienced, turned their lives around. So this is the love that they had for the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't come to uh, embalm his body and bringing the, the, the incense so that Jesus would do something in their minds. It's a dead body. A dead body cannot do anything, but we know that Jesus is alive. But it was the true love and respect and obedience that they had for the Lord. So let's not love the Lord because we expect something. Let's love the Lord because he did something exceptional through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. So... My beloved faithful Christian brothers and sisters, faithful Christians, committed Christians, born again Christians, we are to be good, we are to do good and prepare ourselves for the day of judgment where we will be judged according to our deeds, whether evil or good. Will we pass the test? Praise and glory be to the name of the righteous judge, Jesus Christ our Lord, now and at all times and forever. Amen. One last thing, please also don't forget to rate and review this podcast and share with your friends and family. If you'd like to suggest future episodes or give us detailed feedback, please visit the link in the description or on our Instagram, linktr.ee forward slash double-edged sword. God bless you all.